Okay, Carla oh. Nomberg. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Zibby. How are you? Good. I'm here. We're here. Did you find a place to put your phone? I'm like precariously propped up in my living room and there's a cat staring at me. So she might come jump on me in the middle of this. That might happen. <laughs> but yes, we figured it out. <laughs> awesome. Um, Carla, your book is like, so the right book for right now, how to stop. It's called how to stop losing your shit with your kids. Um, help us. How? Give us some <laughs> advice. Give me a, just like feed me, spoon feed me a couple of tips here so that I can like maintain my sanity and be a better parent. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I want to say to parents is, if you're losing your shit with your kids, it's okay. You're a human. These are crazy circumstances. I mean, think about it. Literally, no one alive today has lived through anything like this. None of us know what we're doing. So that's okay. Let it be okay. So self-compassion, right? Right. We're going to get through this, but you've got to cut yourself some major slack. None of us are perfect parents right now. None of us, really most of us, aren't even our best parents right now, our best selves. It's okay. All right, but let's talk about what we can do, right? Because we don't want it to be a total shit show. First of all, you have to get sleep, right? And if you're anything like me, the gravitational force on your couch gets a whole lot stronger in the evenings after the kids are in bed. And once I'm on the couch, I can't get up. I'm like stuck there, <laughs> right? And the TV's on. I've been watching Shit's Creek because I need to laugh every night. I need to laugh. Um, and then I just, I can't, I'm like, you know, surfing online and I get stuck. So you got to get to bed at a reasonable hour. And here's my number one strategy for doing that. Get yourself ready for bed when your kids get in bed, right? Switch out of your day pajamas, put on your night pajamas, brush your teeth. You know, if you're still wearing contacts, take out your contacts, just get yourself ready for bed because then when it's actually bedtime, you can like, it just feels easier to get in bed when you know you don't have to do all those things. But sleep is super important because all of us are crazy town when we're exhausted. Okay, so that's my number one strategy, sleep. Uh, number two is um, when we're working from home, as many of us are, or the kids are home, even if you're not trying to work from home, you've got your kids, you've got your house, you've got all the stuff, try not to multitask if you can. And I know that anybody watching this right now is like, that woman's crazy, my house would burn down and my family would fall apart if I didn't multitask. But what I will tell you is that multitasking increases your stress and makes it more likely that you're gonna lose it with your children. So a better strategy is to try to do one thing at a time. Now, especially if you're with your kids, which is like all the time right now for some of us. So try to focus on doing just one thing at a time when you can. And if you feel like you have to do multiple things, don't try to do anything important, right? So. <laughs> Don't try to, for example, run an Instagram live while your kid is coming in and asking you for a snack. So that's why I just had to like literally shoot my kid out of the room and be like, go away. I'll help you in a minute. Right. Um, so don't try to work on an important work document while you're also helping your child with their math homework. If they have any or online math or whatever they're doing. I cannot teach my children math anything because I don't understand how they teach math these days. And I'm not a terrible math person, but I was like. Literally, I don't understand the symbols that you're using. I don't know what those mean. So I'm just not teaching my kids math. But the point is, try to do one thing at a time, because otherwise you're going to stress yourself out too much. Um, what else would I say on my sanity strategies? You've got to move your body. Like there was a really interesting piece of research recently where they stuck accelerometers, which are basically just step trackers, movement trackers, um, on kids in high school and just followed those kids. And what they found is that the students who just moved their bodies more, and this is not a euphemism for exercise. I'm not talking about running a marathon. Literally, they stood up and sat down more and then stood up again and then walked across the room. Just moving your body more decreased anxiety and depression in kids. So if you're like, Carla, I'm not starting a freaking exercise routine. That's okay. Like, it's better if you will. But if you won't, that's all right. This is a crazy time. Do what you can. Just move your body, stand up, sit down, get up again, walk up and down the stairs. It'll help your mood. And I'm guessing some of your listeners right now, Zibby, are like this, but she's not helping me with the kids. What do I do with the kids? Right? Because well, it could also be your parents, as Alyssa Altman just pointed out, because she's oh, like yeah. at home with her um, older mother. I mean, obviously yeah. older than her, it's her mother. But anyway, a lot of people are, you know, in close quarters with maybe in-laws or parents or yeah. whatever. So it's not, it's, it could also be how to stop losing your shit with your parents. With literally anyone. With literally with anyone. Spouse. Yeah, with anyone. Full stop. My, um, my favorite strategy for spouses is um, if you're both working from home, you should make up a fake 
colleague, you could name her Cheryl or Susan or John or Frank and just blame everything on Frank. He's the one who left the dirty dishes out, right? Jerk, Frank. He's the one who forgot to charge the laptop. So blame someone else is fine. Also cats, you can blame the cats. But look, the whole point here is that we're better at not losing it when we take care of ourselves. And when we're in these weird situations, it's really tempting to be like, screw it. I'm living in the apocalypse. I'm just going to eat all the ice cream and stay up till 1 a.m. watching CNN. Don't do that because you will be so much more likely to lose it. Um, so focus on your sleep. Move your body when you can. Just do one thing at a time. Um, and forgive yourself a whole lot, right? Self-compassion. Just have a whole lot of compassion for yourself because you're going to lose your shit. You are. And really, like, when was there a better, more reasonable time to lose it than we're all literally stuck under quarantine because of some evil virus? That seems like a pretty reasonable time to lose your shit. I still can't really believe this is going on. Even when you say it, I'm like, ha that's not really happening. <laughs> I feel like so I'm watching it on a TV. Like, yeah. it's like, is this really happening? Yeah, it's so awful. Um, well, those are some really good um, sanity things. Uh, um, and I liked from your book, if I could just read your six tips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the six truths that will help you keep your shit together instead of losing it. You include parenting is hard. Every parent loses their shit sometimes. Contrary to what you may think, you probably haven't broken your children. Even so, losing your shit sucks. It's not a matter of willpower and you can learn how to lose your shit a whole lot less often. I like that particularly it's not a matter of willpower because I not. sometimes feel like if I were just a stronger person, I wouldn't be like screaming right now, but no. And I really want parents to remember that if you're seeing on Instagram, um, all these parents who are like, look at my child practicing the tuba. Look at my child doing a research project online on Peru. And you're like, look at my child wiping their boogers on the wall. It's okay, right? Nobody's doing this perfectly. Don't let yourself get sucked into this false belief that there are parents out there who are totally rocking this quarantine. We're all struggling somehow, and you are not alone. I love it. Rocking the quarantine. That can be like a new... Uh... I know. <laughs> um, one little thing I w do want to say to folks is that I just found out from my publisher that my book, the e-version, is going to be available for 99 cents on all pop platforms this Sunday. So folks want to buy um, an electronic copy for their Kindle, their Nook, um, I, Apple Reads, whatever it is, 99 cents this Sunday, March 29th. So that might be a good time to grab it. That's like a ridiculously good deal for such amazing content. I would pay like $999,000. I feel like I know. Oh, I great. Mean, I so when we're, yeah, no, when we're done, I'll send you my address. You can just put the check in the mail. I'll, that's great. You know, I'll just, I'll just do it on Venmo, you know, because oh, yeah, that's Venmo. what I do, you know. Yeah. Legit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, thank you. And I feel bad even calling you Carla since you're a PhD. I feel like I should be calling you Dr. Carla or something like that. But um, thank you for uh, <laughs> thank you for helping us all and for your book and for having it be so essential and also just for making us feel like it's not such a big deal. And like, I don't know, I feel like your message just lets all parents take a deep breath and feel a little bit better. So I appreciate that. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. And Zibi, thank you all for keep, thank you for keeping us all sane with your amazing book recommendations. It's really so helpful um, right now. Thanks. I'm trying. <laughs> all right. Hang in there. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye.